morning and welcome to Holes and Roots. I hope I do not get my camera wet. There's a slight little pause in the rain right now. We are expecting rain all day, every day for quite a few days, which is good for the garden. You can see we kind of got a little behind in our watering and a lot of things have had the blooms completely die. Which, I mean, they would have died anyway. I need to go through and deadhead. And once it's, I'm gonna do that when it's dry, because I wanna save some of those seed heads um, and dry them out really well. So, speaking of dry, <laughs> we better get in the barn before the next rain round comes through, because I do not want my camera getting wet. That would not be good. You running? You're running so fast. Oh, I don't think so. I think your boots are too short. I think that water would go right in your boots if you stepped in there. <laughs> you guys absolutely love this weather, don't you? What, you think I'm gonna give you some food? Well, I guess if the bucks aren't coming out here today, you can have some. Look at my one little beautiful Muscovy. She's standing out on the stump. Oh, it's sprinkling on my camera. I should probably go in the barn now. Liam, are you gonna play out here in the rain or are you gonna come in with me? I saw that, that was a chipmunk. Let's see if it's still over there. It ran so fast, I don't think it's around. Nope, it's gone. Maybe we'll see it again. Good helper. What you doing, Liam? Yeah, you fill in the shaving bucket up, and what are we going to use that shavings for? For the goats. For the quail. For the quail. Yeah, not the goats. So the quail babies need a new layer of shavings to freshen it up. So I do a new layer of shavings, really thick, and then at the end of the week, I dump it all out and get, they get a free, fresh bedding starting out. Quail should not really be kept on bedding. Those are babies that are full grown now that need to be moved up and upgraded to a full size coop. We've just been a little, a little preoccupied lately, as you may have known. <laughs> These quail have the ideal setup with the wire floor. So all of their droppings just fall through and their feet stay nice and clean. The wire floor doesn't hurt their feet. It's, as you can see, their feet look beautiful. No cuts or scrapes or anything. We don't have any sharp edges, just nice wire floor to keep them protected from predators and allow their droppings to fall through. The droppings fall through underneath and we have a soldier fly colony that we harvest from for our chicken supplemental protein feed. And them, they eat some too. We give, we give a little bit to them and the new baby quail get some too. They all seem to like it and it works well as a good protein source. <sighs> With it being a rain day, that means that the goats cannot go out today. Not only do goats thoroughly disapprove of rain and getting their feet wet, but it also can be dangerous for them to be eating off of wet grass. For those of you that don't know, they can get bloat and enterotoxemia even from eating wet vegetation. It clogs up in their rumen and it doesn't work well. It doesn't digest well for them. And then the other issue that we run into, like some of you may have seen over at Justin Rhodes with his sheep issue, is that um, parasites will actually float up on the water on the blades of grass. 
um, on any vegetation coming off the ground. There's parasites in the soil everywhere. No matter where you live, unless you live in a desert, there's quite a few less issues. But in the wet, hot southeast, there's going to be lots of parasites in your soil. And when it rains, the eggs float. Like I showed you in my video in the Natural Goat series about how to perform your own fecal exam, the flotation of the eggs is what we use to read that through a microscope. So the flotation of the eggs is happening out here in nature. It's naturally going to float up to the top of the water molecules. And so if, it, if there's water molecules all the way up that stem of, or blade of grass, then when the animal eats it, they are eating those eggs and putting a higher load of those eggs into their system. All livestock have parasites. There's a level or a threshold that you have to watch out for. So for goats and sheep, you're looking to keep your eggs per gram below 1,000 or below 500 even if you're really trying to be aggressive. Um, and depending on the parasite, things like barber pole worms, which are very aggressive in the southeast, can lay 10,000 eggs per day instead of just a couple of hundred. So those are ones that you don't want to let the levels get very high. So it's good to treat aggressively. And when I say treat aggressively, I'm not talking about chemical dewormers. I'm talking about aggressive herbal dewormers. And that's very important for using herbal dewormers is to be aggressive with them when there is a present situation and to not back off on them when there's not. You have to treat it as a preventative protocol. It's a good thing he can't eat all that and he'll eventually get tired of eating and let the ducks have the rest. He should end up being one fat turkey, huh? I wanted to let you guys know that I appreciate all of your kind words and thoughts and prayers so much. Ryan's family situation is improving greatly. We had a pretty difficult scare and it's getting better so the prayers are working um, I went and got my blood drawn yesterday I'll be knowing the results next week to either rule this out or confirm our suspicions so that'll be good it'll be a relief to either rule it out or confirm it <laughs> and um, thanks to some very very special kind generous souls from you guys, we have been able to pay our rent. I am so beyond grateful that people were kind enough to send donations when I truly did not expect that nor ask for it in any way. Um, and it just goes to show that sometimes your prayers are answered in ways you're not expecting it to be. You know, I, 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 I rely on my faith a lot. And I just sometimes have to have faith that things are gonna be okay, even when they seem like they're not. And I sometimes don't like it when <laughs> the things that I pray for are answered in ways that I wasn't expecting, because then I feel guilty that people helped. But I know that I have to, I have to accept when people are feeling generous and are able to be generous. I do not want anybody's generosity when they're not able, able and capable. But I want you to know that I will pass it on when my time is good again. When we are financially 
abundant. We do share. We do help others in need during those times. And we continue, even in our difficult financial times, we do continue to give away eggs and give away milk at any opportunity to help a family in need. We do it. So I want you to know that it's very appreciated and it just warms my heart to know that people care so much that they want to help. Um, and the prayers, especially all the good vibes, not just the prayers, but the good vibes and the love and light that you guys send for the ones that don't pray. <laughs> so grateful. So, so grateful. It is... It has helped lift me up out of my dark time and made me feel a little bit brighter. Of course, there's still going to be my sad moments when I think I hear my dog's tail wagging or I feel really sick from whatever I'm fighting and battling. Or, you know, there's always going to be those moments, but there's so many more of these great, fantastic moments where I feel God's hand has touched our family and helped us. And I know that you guys care and that helps lift me up. And I woke up this morning feeling determined to be positive about everything and anything I can be today. Sure, I'm gonna encounter hiccups and bumps along the way. Everybody does. That's not unexpected. But that's all in how you deal with it. And I'm gonna deal with it with a smile on my face and a plan to make it better because you guys give me strength. You guys help me more than you will ever know. <laughs> Thank you for being such loyal friends and family. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. All right, the rain got so hard down there and it got so loud on the tin roof of the barn that I couldn't finish up my vlog. So we headed back up to the house with our milk to filter and chill it. And now I've got to clean up toys. I have toys all over my living room. These boys love to play with their toys, but they're not that great at cleaning them up yet. They're, they're in training still. <laughs> So basically, I'm going to go through some toys and I'm going to put a lot of them into a box and put them in the other room and make it so they have less toys to take out because Titus is going to be spending the days inside with us for a little bit because he's going to have a little bit of retraining with the chickens. He decided that it would be a good idea to jump on top of the chicken tractors and scare the living daylights out of them. And it was not good. It did not end well for one of them unfortunately so with him being a puppy and learning about things we're not mad at him well Ryan's mad at him <laughs> but we are going to have to retrain him a little bit on proper ways to treat chicken tractors and chickens so the good thing is is these next couple of days are rain days anyway and it's probably better to have him inside with us but we're just giving him a timeout for a couple of days from the chickens and then we're gonna regroup we're gonna do some research and we're gonna figure out a better plan for getting him in there with them but them also being safe so wish us luck on that one <laughs> So thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for the generous donations. And we really, 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 really cannot express it enough how much we appreciate all of the good vibes and prayers that you have sent our way. And we are going to continue fighting and continue keeping things positive because that is what we like to do at Wholesome Roots. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.